This is the first 3D benching that came off the print that I just got up and running. And it looks awful. I would say it's a failed print. But after I changed this fan to that fan, the benchy looked like this. Definitely way better, but of course not perfect. The second fan blew a lot more air and it definitely shows. So how can it be that two fans that look identical on the outside perform so differently? Well you see, size is not everything. There are specific things you need to look for when searching for a new fan to find the one that blows the most air. And I'll share that information with you in this video from start to finish. Let's get started. So it all started for me when the edges on the benches started curling up. And eventually they started curling up so much that the nozzle hit the benchy and shifted the entire bed over, causing a layer shift. Now thankfully for me the benchy was able to continue printing and it finished. So clearly this was a problem that I needed to solve. Now at first it might seem like the problem is with the part cooling duct because it doesn't blow cool air around the entire nozzle. And the XYZ calibration cube does show that the X is pointed directly into the duct and it came out pretty clean. However, the Y was pointed to the outside of the duct and it came out pretty poor, especially the top portion of the Y. However, I suspect that the problem is with the fan. Listen to this. As I turn on the fan, you can barely hear it turn on. However, when I turn on the fan on my Maker Gear printer, you can definitely hear the fan turn on. And they also think the part cooling duct is actually not that bad. The distance from the fan is pretty short and the exit openings are actually pretty large so they don't really restrict the flow of air that much. So let's go ahead and remove the fan from the printer to get it tested. And now we'll pull out my fan testing setup with the anemometer, install the gasket, the widest nozzle opening that will stabilize the flow and control the airflow. Then secure the nozzle with some screws, attach the manometer, now take the fan and look at that, it doesn't even have a part number, go figure. So now I'll attach it, I'll pre-attach some screws, and then one thing you have to make sure is that the fan fully seals along the inlet, along all the edges just to make sure that no air leaks. Fully secure this fan now. Now on the anemometer I will change the units to feet per minute. And so now we'll attach the extension cable, zero out the manometer so that it's at zero. Now we'll turn on the fan to full speed and we'll watch for the airflow measurements. Wow, and look at that, it maxes out at about 157 feet per minute, which is about 0.6 cubic feet per minute. That's way less than my other fan, which comes out to be about 4 CFN. So we definitely need a new fan and let's jump in on Amazon and start looking at what we can find there. I'll just open up a few fans right away and I'll be looking at things like price, reviews, making sure there's a good amount of reviews and they're pretty positive. I'll be looking at specs like the CFM, the current, the RPM. Oh wow, that part cooling duct looks familiar. But honestly, I don't trust the fan specs on Amazon, so I will head over to Digikey just to double check them and cross reference. So I'll type in 5015 blower fan, I'll go through some filters just to make sure I'm looking at active fans, and then I'll zoom in on the specs, and it looks like the fans are from 3 to 5 CFMs, so I'll just open up one of the fans and then go to the data sheet and hopefully can get some useful data. And so looking at the data sheet, we can see that the, a fan that blows 5 CFM will need to operate at 6,500 RPMs and will need about 0.18 amps of current. So I'm just going to use that as a judgment and we'll go back to the fans on the Amazon website. And this is the fan I decided to go ahead and buy. It had good reviews, it was more, a little more expensive, um, it had a 5.36 CFM rating at 6000 RPMs. Um, the current was 0.1 amps which was a little low but I just thought it would be one of the better fans on the list so I decided to give it a try. I have an affiliate link in the description below if you're interested. So let's go ahead and remove the fan from the package. 
and we'll cut off the connector and then we will strip the wires. Now we'll crimp on the connector pins and then attach the pins into the connector housing itself. And let's go ahead and remove the old fan from the setup. Here's our new fan. And let's attach it to the setup now. Once again, make sure the fan is fully seated on the bracket so that there's no air leaking. We'll attach our extension cable, replug our manometer to the bracket again. We'll turn on the fan to full speed. And look at that, we're getting about 925 to 944 feet per minute. That's about 3.8 CFM, much better. Although it's still a lot less than 5.36 advertised on Amazon, but I'm still happy for a fan off Amazon. So let's go ahead and install the new fan, install the duct back on the fan, and make sure to fully snug it back in. And this time around, the duct was pretty tight around the fan, so I had to be careful to make sure it's fully seated. I'll reapply the tape. Just and lastly, I'll connect the fan and tidy up all of the extra wire length. And let's begin with the XYZ calibration cube to see how well the fan is performing. The X is nice and clean as before, and then look at the Y. Way better, much better. Although there are still some issues along the edge of the cube and along the bottom. And finally, let's print the 3D Benchy and see how it does. And so far, things are looking good. And now that it's done, let's do a side-by-side -side comparison. And wow, what a big improvement. The bench is definitely looking much cleaner, but if we look at the bottom, there are definitely major part cooling issues still going on. And simply changing the fan was not enough. So I will definitely need to improve the part cooling duct in the future. Now the reason that changing only the fan made such a big improvement is because the part cooling duct had exit nozzles that were pretty large and they were not restricting airflow. But what if you have a duct with smaller nozzles that are restricting airflow? Then you need to look at the fan curve. So watch this video next to learn what the fan curve is and how to use it to select the fan that blows lots of air.